Hello, my lovely Virgos, and a very warm welcome to your annual 2023-24 horoscope forecast. Now, the year starts out with your ruler retrograde, and Mars is also retrograde. So what does this mean? Well, first of all, it's a wonderful opportunity for going inside, for working on the internal you, not looking too much on the outside, what's happening, what this one's doing, what that one's doing or not doing, but focusing upon yourself and really recharging your energies and your battery. The main thing when, certainly when we've got Mercury retrograde, of course, as you will know, as it's your ruler, we've got Mercury retro uh, resonating there with Pluto. It will go direct on January the 12th. It's a good time for completing projects, having things come to fruition. It's a good time for dotting the I's and crossing the T's. It's a good time for studying, for learning, for writing, for journaling. It's just not the best time for starting and initiating new things. And if you do, then just make sure that you check things really carefully so that you don't have nuisance things coming along after the 12th when Mercury goes direct. But it's really good for reflection, contemplation, reassessing your life thinking about what's truly important to me, what kind of thinking patterns do I want to establish that will make me feel happy? The fifth house has to do with happiness and joy and bringing out the child within you. What's it gonna take? What new habit patterns of thought can you begin to incorporate into your life? It's retrograding Capricorn and earth sign. So perhaps you could have a mantra or an affirmation that you're gonna think nothing but positive thoughts and you're gonna look out and watch your thinking because you're very critical. Now, sometimes that works in your favor because you're picking up things that need to be kept and things that need to be discarded. And sometimes, of course, you can be your own worst enemy. So maybe you'll be working on that critical voice, but it's a wonderful opportunity to reprogram your mind to a more positive setting. Now the Mars retrograde is here in your 10th house. It's gonna be retrograde until January the 18th. So go into new projects slowly, observe, listen, watch. What's motivating you? Why are you taking action? Are you doing it because you're excited about something? Are you doing it because you're fearful or you're desperate? Look at your motivations especially connected with your career, your work, what you want to do in the world, how you want to be seen, how you want to contribute, because you matter. You have something unique to contribute. And after the 18th of January, then it's a great time for the external things. And once you've done the internal work, will begin to gain momentum and move forward for you. Now, the next big event will be on March the 8th, <clears throat> when Saturn will change sign. It's been sitting in your sixth house for the last almost three years, and now for the next two and a half, three years, will be in your seventh house of relationships. Now, don't panic. Saturn is not a big malefic. Saturn is there to help us. Let me explain how. Neptune is the dream. And it can also bring disillusionment. And maybe you've had some disappointments and disillusionment in your relationships during the last few years that Neptune has been transiting that house. Now, what Saturn does, Saturn gets you real. Neptune floats off and says, oh, wouldn't this be lovely and a romance and this person looks lovely. And, and then you're brought down to earth with a bump sometimes. But the Saturn enables you to look with the eyes of reality at a situation. It slows you down in a relationship and it can also bring a very stable, long lasting relationship. So think about what your dream is, your vision for a relationship if you want one, a business relationship, all kinds of one-to-one -one relationships. And then really 
think about tangible ways in which you can begin to create more stability and more reality into your relationship. So this can be a very good transit for you if you use it in a constructive way. Saturn only comes to bite you up the bum if you are not learning the lessons that you are being shown. It's just if you keep repeating them, then the messages get stronger and usually more uncomfortable. Now, on March the 23rd, we've got Pluto also changing sign, big hitter. It's going to change sign. It's going to be until the middle of June. So March the 23rd until the middle of June, Pluto will go into your sixth house. Now, you're going to get a taste of it. And then after next year, it'll stay there for many years. So Pluto in the sixth is asking you to take your power with respect to your physical health, your well-being, your mental health, your emotional health, for you to be in charge of it best you can, to connect with the divine sources, with various uh, developments in technology. I'm certain there's going to be the most amazing technological developments as this Pluto ingress into Aquarius develops over the next four or five years. It's going to be amazing what will develop in the field of healing. We're probably going to look at pharma and think that we were, you know, living in the dark ages compared to the speed at which things will be moving. So you may get involved more in the healing field. This is very much a Virgo field, healing, health, well-being. Uh, and it's also a wonderful time for bringing more meaning into the work that you do and serving others, helping others on a very deep, possibly transformational level. Now, on April the 20th, we've got a solar eclipse happening, where is it? It's there, <laughs> in your eighth house, resonating with Jupiter. Solar eclipse, this brings to light anything that you might have had hidden, things that have been hiding, things that have been latent, and it brings out what may have been blocking you to be cleared, to be a fresh light of air into all those areas that may have been, you know, should we say, hidden for a while, you suddenly can see more clearly. So it's, it's really throwing light on maybe things from your past, people from your past, and it's a wonderful opportunity here for broadening your knowledge of the unseen, metaphysics, esoteric subjects, psychology, astrology, channeling, all of that, if that's your interest, that can blossom at this time. It can also bring you financial opportunities, business opportunities, and especially working in collaboration with somebody else. Now, on May the 5th, we've got a lunar eclipse in your sign, lovely Virgos. So this is shining a light on you, a lot happening in the relationship area, and it's like, hey, what about me? So anything that's uh, maybe if you've not been taking enough care of yourself, you will be reminded of it. But this is an opportunity for you to grow into more of who you are, an opportunity to explore more of you. It can be very exciting. It's like bursting out of your, your old self and a new self is able to uh, be born. So it may be the death of an old self and a new you coming out, more vibrant, more energized, more rejuvenated than ever before. Now, on May the 17th, we've got Jupiter changing sign, joining uh, Uranus in this ninth house. Fabulous. These two planets are very happy together, resonating together. And Jupiter will be in that ninth house uh, for a year. This is great for travel, physical travel virtual travel, connecting with people far and wide, globally, galactically, intergalactically, you name it. It's great for spreading the word. It's great for an expansion of your spiritual journey, for many light bulbs going off, enlightenment moments and experiences. Lots of inspiration, lots of learning and abundance 
it's it's a real opening up of you if you will take it and not keep yourself small and limited yet yeah, keep stretching and more opportunities will come for better relationships for better finances for more fulfilling work for feeling as though you are making a difference because that's very important to you lovely virgos on june the 12th pluto will go back into this fifth house for a few months and this gives you a great time to just re-evaluate um, what's important to me. Am I doing the work that I really feel as though I've come to do? And you may be digging deeper into that area. Even though I love what I do, I do love what I do, but I'm constantly digging deeper. How can I give more? What can I give that's new, that's different? How can I dig up more of my potentials? I'm always asking that question. And this is the question that this Pluto, last bit of Pluto in that fifth house is encouraging you to examine. Now on October the 14th, whoopsie daisy, we've got a solar eclipse happening here in your second house. This is giving you some new opportunities financially, business opportunities possibly, and an opportunity, it's getting reiterated here, to explore more of your talents and your gifts. And on the October the 28th, we've got a lunar eclipse in this ninth. This ninth house very much takes you to a wider a perspective of your world. So it's really very positive and has lots of uh, possibilities opening up for you. So don't close doors, open doors, and look out of those doors. And that's what's being encouraged here. Now, all the Mercury retrogrades are going to be in Earth signs this year, April, May, August, September, December, January of 2024. So this is going to be very good for you because you're an Earth sign. And what this shows is that any ideas that you've got, it's going to be very important to take practical steps baby steps, ideally on a daily basis, towards the, the tangible realization of your ideas. So we're going to see a lot of ideas that may have been floating in the ethers for quite some time actually becoming a reality. So get ready. Maybe those med beds where there's going to be tremendous healing, you just get on this bed and your whole frequency is upgraded. All kinds of things are coming. So this is a very exciting time. And explore your gifts because you are a part of this new awakening. So I thank you for liking, for subscribing if you haven't already, for commenting, I read them all, and for sharing. Happy, happy new year. Much love.